Welcome to Learning in Language Arts with Mrs. Jones. Today's lesson will be on commas, rules, and other usage. The purpose of this lesson is to meet the goal of our GVC number three, students will use proper conventions and grammar. After today's lesson, you will be able to identify the six rules of comma usage, edit sentences for comma usage, and use commas correctly in a written sentence. So why do we use commas? A comma marks a slight break between different parts of a sentence. Used properly, commas make the meaning of sentences clear. Just like in this picture, at first we have let's eat grandma and grandma says, what? If we put the comma there, it changes the entire meaning of the sentence. Let's eat grandma. So remember, punctuation saves lives. All right, comma rules. There is no limit on how many commas you can use in a sentence as long as each comma is following a rule. Commas are only wrong when a rule is broken or when they are applied incorrectly. There are six basic rules for comma usage that we will talk about in our lesson today. When using these six rules, you cannot go wrong with a comma usage. So the first is for compound sentences. Second rule is for opening phrases and clauses. Third is for making non-essentials. Fourth is miscellaneous information. Fifth is adjectives that coordinate. And sixth is a series or a list. You can see that this has made um, the word commas. So we've used a little bit of alliteration to help us to remember what the six rules are. So let's start with rule number one. Rule number one is the C in commas. It is to use a comma with a conjunction to make a compound sentence. When creating a compound sentence, the comma always comes before the conjunction. It would actually go where the period was in the first um, simple sentence being used. And there are seven coordinating conjunctions that we use, and we call them fanboys. They are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So here's an example of this, uh, of common usage in a compound sentence. We have David is talking, but no one is listening. You can see that the comma comes before the conjunction. We have two independent clauses, David is talking, and no one is listening. In our second example, we have Sally sang, comma, and Louisa danced. So Sally sang is the first independent clause. The second independent clause is Louisa danced. So pause and practice on your notes and practice page. Rule number two, the O in commas is for using um, a comma to set off opening words, phrases, and clauses from the sentence. An interjection is followed by a comma if placed at the beginning of a sentence. And when a sentence begins with a prepositional phrase or dependent clause, a comma is always needed before the independent clause or after the opening phrase. So here's a couple examples. We have the interjection, whoa, with the comma, that was a crazy fly ball. Or we have the prepositional phrase, after the snow, snow after the storm was over, comma, we went home. So that was a crazy fly ball and we went home are the dependent clauses. Woe is the interjection. After the storm was over is a uh, prepositional phrase. We also have in 1516, comma, soldiers were hired as mercenaries. The dependent clause in 1516 comes at the beginning. So we get the comma before the independent clause. So pause and practice on your page. Rule number three, the M, is to use commas to make non-essential clauses and phrases set aside. So a non-essential is a word or phrase that can be taken out of the sentence and not change the meaning. It is extra information. And the commas go before and after the word or phrase unless 
that word or phrase is found at the beginning or ending of the sentence. Here's a couple examples. Jane, comma, who is my best friend, comma, this is the non-essential, has asked me to be a bridesmaid. So we can take this out and it would say, Jane has asked me to be a bridesmaid. The non-essential or extra information is, who is my best friend? The comma comes before and after. We also have Jonathan will, comma, in fact, comma, serve on the committee. The word in fact just gives emphasis, that phrase gives emphasis, but it is non-essential, it is not needed. So it's your turn to pause and practice. Rule number four, the M. Use commas for miscellaneous information such as dates and addresses. Commas are found after the day and year when writing a given date. When writing an address, commas must be placed after the street name and number and between the city and state. And when writing a letter, it is important to remember to add a comma after the salutation or the opening and the closing. So here's an example. Um, we have Hal lives at 222 Joy Street, comma, so after the street and the street name and number, Dayton, comma, Ohio. The city is Dayton, Ohio is the state, so between the city and state. Also, number uh, example number two, my grandfather was born on December 22nd, comma, 1967, comma, at the local hospital. So the comma comes after the month and date and then after the year also. So pause and practice. Rule number five, the A. Use commas with adjectives that coordinate. Coordinating adjectives are adjectives that describe the same noun and are equal in importance. You need to ask yourself the following questions to determine if adjectives are coordinating adjectives and therefore should have a comma between them. So first, does the sentence make sense if and is added between the adjectives? And also, does the sentence make sense if the adjectives are reversed? So let's take a look at some examples. We have nice and kind man would be nice, comma, kind man. So both adjectives describe man and they have equal um, importance. We have the black and mean cat black mean cat okay so black and cat mean are both describing the cat here's a non-example so let you know how it wouldn't work we can't say red brick house we couldn't say the red and brick house because red is actually describing the brick which is describing the house so this is an adverb which describes the adjective and that happens quite often, so you need to make sure that you're checking to those two questions. So go ahead and pause and practice. Rule number six, the S. Use commas to separate words, phrases, or clauses in a series or list. This is probably the most common along with the compound sentence rule that we use. So we use commas to separate three or more words, phrases, or clauses in a series, and a conjunction goes between the last two items of the series. So here is an example. A worthwhile philosophy includes honesty, comma, industry, comma, and kindness. So the list is honesty, industry, and kindness. We put the and um, before the third or final. We also have John, David, and Mark left the store. This is a compound subject. Um, it, John and David and Mark are separated by commas. It's your turn to go ahead and pause and practice. All right, boys and girls, today we went through the six rules of comma usage. So you should be able to identify them using your notes and also how to edit sentences for comma usage and use commas correctly in a written sentence. So these two things you should be practicing on your practice page, how to edit sentences and add those commas, and then also how to write your own. Thank you for learning in language arts with Mrs. Jones. Until next time.